Hello everybody, I'm Andrea, aka Miss Fackelman, and today I'm going to teach you all about Brazilian artist Romero Brito. Romero Brito is one of my favorite artists. I love his artistic style. He was born in 1963 in Recife, Brazil, where he grew up with seven brothers and sisters. Because he came from a big family, money was tight. However, that did not stop him from discovering his passion for art and creating beautiful images on whatever supplies he could get his hands on, whether it was scraps of paper or cardboard. Because he was so talented, he later went on to study artwork in Paris, France. While he was here, he was inspired by the artwork from famous artists in history, including Pablo Picasso and Henry Matisse. And then in the 1980s, he would move to Miami, Florida. In videos that I have seen where Romero Brito discusses his artwork, he says he loves living in Miami, Florida because it's a very dynamic city. His big break came when the founder of the company Absolute Vodka asked him to do an artistic interpretation of the drink. He has since gone on to do artwork for many more famous companies like Disney, Coca-Cola, and McDonald's. He has also done portraits of many celebrities like Queen Elizabeth II, Leonardo DiCaprio, former President Obama, and so on. His artwork has been inspired by Cubist and pop art. Cubist art is known for its geometric shapes, which we do see in his artwork, and pop art is well known for its bold lines and really bright, fun colors. What I'm going to do for this video is teach all of you how to draw a fruit bowl that resembles one of Romero Brito's artworks of a fruit bowl. This is a lesson I do every year with my third graders. I think it's a really great opportunity to draw a still life that isn't very realistic, but is a great way to practice drawing lines and shapes and adding fun patterns to your artwork. So let's grab a piece of paper, whatever coloring supplies you want to use, find a nice comfortable place to work, and let's get started. All right, now what you are going to need to draw your Romero Brito inspired fruit bowls is a piece of paper. You're going to need a ruler for drawing lines because we're going to be drawing a lot of straight lines. However, if you don't have a ruler, anything with a straight edge like a magazine or a book will do. But it has to be something that you can lay down flat on your paper. Don't forget your pencils. They have to be sharpened or you need to have a pencil sharpener nearby and also have an eraser. My pencil has a pretty good eraser, so I'm just going to stick with that. Now, the first thing that we want to do to start our drawing is take our ruler or magazine and put it along the bottom of the paper. We're gonna be drawing a flat straight line to make the table our fruit bowl is going to go on. You wanna make sure that it is straight on the paper. Take a look at my ruler. Is it straight on the paper right now? No, a fruit bowl would slide off the table if this is how it was. How about now? Nope, not quite. Is it straight now? Awesome, so now it really helps if you make sure that the edges are lined up with the edge of your paper. Now I'm gonna press down on my ruler to make sure it doesn't shake, and then drag the point of my pencil along the top of the ruler. Now I've got a straight line for my table. The next thing that we are going to do before we draw the bottom of our bowl, we need to draw the part of the bowl that's going to be holding fruit. Now remember, the bigger your bowl is, the more it's gonna hold, but the tinier it is, the less room you'll have for whatever you wanna put in your fruit bowl. So let's draw what looks like a really wide U that goes in the middle of the paper. Also kind of looks like half a circle. Make sure it's just as tall on one side as it is on the other. Great. Next, we are going to draw a smaller curved line or half a circle at the bottom. This is gonna be the base for our bowl. There we go. And then we are gonna draw two straight lines connecting the top of the bowl with the bottom of the bowl. And I think that my curve is a little higher on this side than the other. So I'm gonna try to make them match. Make sure you don't press too hard with your pencil, otherwise you will still see your mistakes after you erase them. Now, we are going to draw half of the top of the bowl. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my ruler, make sure that the edge of it is lined up perfectly with the edge of my paper so we know that it's straight. You think it's straight right now? Nope. How about now? 
there we go it looks perfectly lined up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the paper so now I'm going to draw half of a line that goes from one end of the bowl all the way to the middle you want to leave some room here because we're going to draw grapes spilling out the side of the bowl now what is the shape of a grape if you said circle you're right if you said oval you're also right. In art, we often see grapes looking like circles, but in real life, most grapes are more oval shaped. So now what we're going to do, we are going to draw circles to make our grapes. Remember, the bigger your circle is, the bigger your grape will be. So I'm going to draw just one circle right here at the edge of the line that I made right here. All right, then I'm gonna draw another grape right here. Awesome. Try to make them the exact same size because if you make a bunch of big grapes and then a bunch of tiny grapes, they may not match very well. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to draw another grape that's about the same size. If it's not perfect, that's fine, but you wanna make them all mostly the same size. Then another grape, and another grape. If you have trouble drawing the shape of a circle, you can trace the bottom of a glue stick or of a marker, so that way they look the size you want. And I'm gonna draw another and another, and so on. You're probably thinking, and another, and another, have that voice going in your head. There we go. Now, one thing that I wanna do to make the grapes look like they're overlapping, we're going to draw <clears throat> half circles above and in between some of the grapes that we've already drawn. So now it looks like there are grapes behind the ones that we just drew. And if you want, you can draw another half a circle behind that one, and then another in between these two and then keep going. If you wanna draw some full circles, you can go right ahead, but to make it look like a big full cluster of grapes, let's also draw some half circles tucked behind the other ones that we just drew. All right, if you wanna add more grapes than I did, go right ahead if you're done, that is absolutely fine. Next thing we're going to draw is our apple. Now let's try to think of the shape of an apple. Is it perfectly circular? Not really. Remember, the apple has that dimple in the top where the stem and the leaf normally come out. But let's think of it from the side. I'm going to draw a line to make the top of the apple. Before you start drawing it on your paper, try to think of what letter this reminds you of. I'm going to start over here with my pencil behind this grape, and I'm going to draw a line that curves up, comes down a little bit, not very far, and then draw another line just like that one that comes up, and then comes down. What letter does this sort of remind you of? Maybe an M, reminds you of that arch that you see above McDonald's, only the middle of that M does not come all the way down. Otherwise it would look a little more like a peach or like an M. So let's draw what looks like the letter M, but don't make the M come down so far. And then when you're done drawing the shape of your apple, draw two lines super close together to make the stem. Now to draw the leaf, you wanna make that football shape. To do that, you're gonna draw on whichever side you choose what looks like a leaf coming out of the stem. You're gonna draw a curved line or a rainbow line, and then draw another one that comes underneath. You don't have to, but if you wanna draw that line that goes through the leaf, go right ahead. Now, what's another fruit that we can put in our fruit bowl? I can imagine a lot of ideas are going through your head. One that I'm going to draw right here that's pretty easy is an orange. For this one, you just have to draw half a circle that's disappearing behind the apples and the grapes. Doesn't look much like an orange right now, but a lot of oranges, they have a little circle right here. That's where it was attached to the tree. And then draw some freckles or little teeny tiny dimples on the orange peel. Now it looks a bit more like an orange. Now what about a pineapple? Does a pineapple look a lot like an orange? Not really. A pineapple looks like a gigantic oval, while oranges are more circular. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw half of an oval, but don't make it too high up because we need enough space to make the leaves. You're gonna draw what looks kind of like an oval coming up and then coming down. And then we are going to draw tic-tac-toe lines, lines that go up and down and then left and right to make those sections in our pineapple. Not sure if it looks like a pineapple just yet, but remember they have little needles or spikes that are coming out the side. For a simpler version of it, let's just draw some X's in each section we made on our pineapple. <clears throat> Does it look like a pineapple yet? Nope, it's missing those leaves on the top. I'm going to draw two dots 
close together at the top of the pineapple. These are gonna mark where I want those spiky leaves to come out of. Now using these dots for a reference, I'm gonna draw a line that springs out, then comes back in, curving a little, then comes back out, then back in. Almost looks like a spiky hairstyle for my pineapple. Comes out, then back in, out, then ends right at the other dot that I made. If you wanna make some more leaves coming out in between the others, go right ahead. So now we have a pineapple, an orange, an apple, and grapes. However, do you think there's still some more space to draw something else? Definitely. Now you can draw whatever other foods you still have room for. Maybe make some of them spilling out or sitting on the table where your fruit bowl is. Because I have enough space over here, I'm gonna draw a loaf of bread, a really tall loaf of bread. I think that's called a baguette. And it's gonna look like a really long, skinny oval that comes out and then comes back. Baked bread usually has these little cracks in the top. So I'm gonna draw long skinny U's to split the top of my bread. Some of those lines going behind the leaf and the stem of my apple. There we go. Just for fun, I'm gonna draw another grape over here. Now we have finished our fruit bowls. Well, let's take a look again at Romero Brito's artwork. Does he ever have a blank background like what we have right now? No, he doesn't. He always breaks up the background with a bunch of bold black lines. So everyone, let's grab our rulers and start drawing lines to divide our backgrounds. You can choose how many lines you want to go through your bowl. I will draw two, but you can draw as many or as few as you want. Draw one line that goes vertically another that goes horizontally. Then, now that we are finished with drawing the background and the bowl, let's take our time to draw patterns to fill each of these sections and even some um, of the bowl. And maybe if you wanna add a pattern on your apple or on your bread, that's absolutely fine. What are some fun patterns that we can put? Polka dots, hearts, stripes, wavy lines. The possibilities are endless. Let's try to have at least three different patterns, but if you want to repeat some patterns, maybe you wanna use polka dots over here and here, and you wanna use stripes here and on the table, you go right ahead. So let's take our pencils and add as many patterns as we can think of in our backgrounds. Now we can start coloring. Remember, let's fill in the cheese holes. So as we are coloring, do not scribble. You don't wanna scribble all over your pictures. You wanna make sure that you very slowly fill in each area in your background. I start with the outside of a section and then I start moving my crayon back and forth as I fill in all the white spots. Now, do you see any scribbles right there? Nope, and that is a good thing. Now let's take a look at what I do right here. I'm gonna take my blue, just scribble back and forth, almost like I'm spraying a silly string. There we go. Did I color that very well? Nope, I see a lot of white spaces in the background and we wanna have nice, bold, solid blue right in this area. So I'm gonna go over the edge of this shape right here. Make sure I go back and forth to get all those white spots and start moving my blue back and forth, back and forth as I make my way to the bottom of this stripe. And if I lose, and if I miss out on any white spots, just go back and fill them in. See how much better that looks? Now I'm using crayons because it's been a while since I used crayons in my artwork, but if you would rather use colored pencils or markers or get messy with paint, you go right ahead. But if you're gonna be using paint, I suggest you put newspaper under your artwork and you wear a smock or at least wear a t-shirt you don't mind getting paint on. So everyone, grab what colors you want and whatever supplies you'd like to use and let's get started.
Great job, everybody. If you are new to this channel, please click subscribe below so you can get notified whenever there's a new video on Art with Andrea. If you want to say what you liked about this video or say what you think I should draw next, leave a comment below. And above all else, everybody, stay creative, have a good day, and I'll see you all next time.